There's only this moment. And as you settle into this moment, as you relax into this moment, your story just begins to dissolve. Your story is everything outside of this moment. It's made up of all your memories, all your past experiences, all your ideas and concepts and beliefs. And many, many people have within their story, at the very base and foundation of their story, they have a lot of repressed feelings from their childhood. Feelings of anger, hurt, sadness, pain. Feelings of need that was never really met. That's all there at the very foundation of your story just waiting to be triggered by something that happens in your life now. Also at the very foundation of your story are all those limiting beliefs that formed in your childhood, in your relationship with your parents. Limiting beliefs like, I'm not good enough, I can't do it. It's not okay to be all that I am. I'm not loved, I'm not wanted, I'm not worthy. There's a whole list we can choose from of limiting beliefs. And what happens is when you're living within your story, sometimes the story is just fine. But every now and then, those old feelings from your past, those old limiting beliefs get triggered and up they come, they project onto the present moment and completely distort your experience of yourself of others, of life. And you don't really need to wait until these limiting beliefs and feelings from your past are triggered because they're always subtly filtering through within your story. They just subtly filter through. That subtle feeling of I'm not good enough, I'm not loved, I'm not worthy, I can't do it. These things subtly filter through and, and, in a sense, color every aspect of your life. They prevent you from being all that you are. In a sense, they keep you imprisoned within a very, very limited existence. That's your story. Now, in the story, you have your painful past, your limited past, but you also have a hopeful future. That's all within the story. You remember a painful past. You project forward into a hopeful future, hoping that it'll get better. Maybe one day you'll be good enough. Maybe one day you'll be loved. You'll be worthy. You'll be accepted. Maybe one day you'll be successful. This is all unfolding within your story. It's the past and future, and it's all a great illusion. And to the extent that you're lost in your mind, in a sense imprisoned, caught within your mind, with its endless chattering thought, you're caught in your story. You're imprisoned within your story. And you know, no matter how much you do positive affirmations, no matter how much you follow the law of attraction or other kinds of things that are available to us, there's no real escape from your story. You might improve your story, but awakening is something quite different. Awakening is not about improving your story. Awakening is awakening out of your story. Awakening out of the past and future. Awakening out of those limiting beliefs. When you're truly present, you quite literally come out of your story. Now there's just this moment. Your mind is silent. You're utterly present in this moment. Where is your story? Where are your thoughts? Where are your beliefs? Where are your ideas? Where are your memories? If you're fully present and your mind is silent and you're utterly present with what is here, 
That's what awakening is. Awakening is awakening out of the past and future world of the mind. Out of a world of illusion. A world of separation. Into the world of now. You don't have to be present all the time, but you have to be awake enough that you know where the truth of life is. You know that, is, that it is here now, and everything else is a story you've gotten yourself caught in. And for, for many people, the more you try and fix your story, the worse it's going to get. Because the ultimate design is not to fix your story, but to awaken out of your story. That's the very purpose of our journey. The story is designed to awaken you out of it. But for the most part, we don't awaken out of the story. We just relentlessly continue to improve our story and make it better. Will you love me? Will you accept me? Do you approve of me? Am I good enough? Is there anyone here for me? Am I all alone? And so humanity is completely lost in a story. And it's so ironic in a way that the present moment is so available to us. so waiting for us such an invitation to us to come out of the story just be here be ye here as i am here say the flowers be ye here where else could you be the only place you can be other than here now in the world of here now is in the world of not here. A world of memory and imagination. That's the world that humanity inhabits. And when we inhabit that world of past and future and endless thought, the ego reigns supreme within that world. So all I'm ever really doing is joining the flowers and the leaves here. I'm just joining them in inviting you, inviting you to come out of your story and become present. Just for a moment. Not only become present just for a moment, but become very, very, very deeply present. So present that your mind falls silent. So present that you begin to feel the presence that is in everything. So present that you begin to feel the oneness that is here as the illusion of separation dissolves. That's the invitation. And once you've experienced presence at the level that I'm speaking of, such a deep sense of peace, such a deep sense of well-being, such a deep sense of love, once you've ex experienced this yourself, then you know. You know what I'm speaking of. You cannot know with your mind. It's impossible. Your ego will never understand this or get this. You have to know it from your own experience. Just this. This moment. Exactly as it is. A fully present, fully conscious being. Fully present with what is here. There's not even a movement of your body that is unconscious. Even if you scratch your head, you're a conscious present being as you do so. 
just for a few moments. Experience what it's like to be a present and awakened being. Relax here. The moment you're truly present with something that's here in the moment with you, you must come out of the mind because mind is always past future. Thoughts will stop all by themselves without you even intending that because thoughts are always past future. You don't need to try and stop thinking. You don't need to pursue enlightenment. You don't need to try and be more spiritual. Just be present. As Jesus said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Well, in the context of this teaching, Seek ye first the moment of now, and all these things shall be added unto you. It's even incorrect to say, Seek ye. Seek ye takes you into the future. Just notice when you are not present and become instantly present with something that is here in the moment with you. That's the way of awakening. At least that's step one. Step one, master the art of being present. Deepen into presence. Relax here. Relax into the moment of now. Step two, much more complex. I'm not going to go into all the details of step two. But step two involves bringing consciousness to all the ways you're pulled out of presence, consciousness to all those unconscious aspects of yourself, consciousness to who you've become, allowing all the repressed feelings to surface into conscious and responsible expression, bringing awareness to how you lose yourself in others. That's step two. It's not that difficult. Let me tell you how long it takes to complete each of these steps. Step one, being present, is completed in an instant. There's no time. In the moment of remembering to be present, you're present. That's the problem with practice. That's the problem with spiritual practice. You're practicing something in order to get somewhere. But if you just remember to be present with what's here, then you're already here. Step one is instant. No time, no practice, no gap. In the remembering, I am present. I'm present with the sound I hear. I notice I'm thinking, no problem, now I'm present with you. Thinking is coming in again, no problem. I'm feeling the chair against my back or I'm present in the movement of my hands, or I'm present as I gaze out through these eyes. I am here now. Step one, no time, no process. Step two is a process that occurs over time as you pay attention. If it takes you six months or a year to master step two, who cares? You've been at this for lifetimes and lifetimes. If it takes 10 years, who cares? For some of you, it will take very little. Some of you, it will be a little more uh, complex because you're so caught in your story, so locked into your past. The ego has such a strong grip on you. The past has such a strong grip on you. You're merciless and relentless in your pursuit of a hopeful future, trying to fix it. Or you're merciless in your commitment to repressing your feelings. That's going to make step two a little more difficult. But if you relax and you come into right relationship with all of these things from presence, then the journey becomes quite enjoyable even the painful moments. 
actually quite exciting as you start to connect the dots and you realize how and where you've been caught. I did a session last week with a woman who has been caught all her life in the most extreme pain, a very difficult childhood. And we did a session, and, and I spoke about this last week. Uh, in the session, we were able to separate her from the little girl that she once was with all that pain and all that hurt so that she could experience herself independent of that little girl. And I did another session with her today, and she's just so free, so happy. It's amazing what can happen when we can free ourselves from our story and then from presence bring love and compassion to whatever's in our story, the little boy or girl from our past, the ego, whatever it is within the story. From presence, you bring love, compassion, acceptance to it all. And you'll be amazed what happens. Once you come into right relationship with it all, the little girl or the little boy, who you've become, right relationship with those repressed feelings that you've repressed all your life, right relationship with that part of you that loses yourself in others, seeking love, seeking acceptance, fearing judgment, fearing rejection. From presence, you see, in presence, you're, you are an eternal being, utterly transcendent of your story. It's from presence that the story is revealed. From presence, from within presence, that every aspect of you within your story is brought to consciousness. You even bring to consciousness unconscious movement. If you notice you're moving unconsciously, you bring it to consciousness. It's very, very simple. So step one, no process, it's immediate. Step two, a process. Just first be present, then pay attention. Life is a mirror reflecting to you everything you need to know in order to free yourself from the story. Life is a mirror, your friends, your, your husbands, your wives, your relationships, they're all mirrors reflecting to you where you're lost and how you're lost in the story. If only we just would pay attention, look into the mirror. Who have I become in my story? Am I controlling? Am I judgmental? Am I unworthy? Am I arrogant? Do I judge myself? Do I judge others? Am I hard on myself? Do I feel like a failure deep down? Do I feel like I'm not good enough? Who am I in my story? And how am I dealing with that within my story? If deep down within my story I feel unloved, how am I dealing with that? Am I pursuing love, trying to please everyone? Or am I withdrawing and hiding so I don't have to feel the pain? Do I feel shame? Do I feel guilt? Am I a blamer within my story? Do I need to be right? Is that who I am in my story? The more you bring the story to consciousness in right relationship with it, the more you'll find yourself relaxing out of the story. The story itself will relax. The story itself will begin to gradually and gently transform as you bring the energy of love, acceptance and compassion to it. But what supports everything I'm saying is presence. The energy and consciousness of presence. You present in this moment. Who is present in this moment? I am. Who is I am? I am. That's the end of the it's the end of the journey. It's the end of the story. Who is transcendent of the story? I am. Who is here now? I am.
we free ourselves from the story, we settle into the I am that I am, and then we re-emerge as a beautiful expression of the unique being that I am, or that you are, without limitation, without fear, without concern with what others think of you, just being authentic, being true to who you really are from presence. It's like a re-emergence. You re-emerge as all that you are. 